Welcome. In this video, we will be discussing about the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutant. Now, just for your information, apart from the Stockholm Convention, there are two other conventions that you can like refer. The one is Rotterdam, Rotterdam Convention. And the other one is your Basel Convention. They also deal with a kind of things that you need to know in terms of how the hazardous waste is maintained across border. So these kind Stockholm Convention, Rotterdam Convention and Basel Convention just go through them what they are basically about. So Stockholm Convention try to regulate the persistent organic pollutants. On the other hand, Rotterdam Convention is about hazardous chemical and Basel Convention is about the hazardous waste. So basically these are the things that you need to know. Now in this particular video, we will be focusing more on the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutant. So let's begin. The first thing that we need to know is why this particular convention was in news. So why it is in news? Because Union Cabinet has approved the ratification of seven chemicals listed under the Stockholm Convention on the Persistent Organic Pollutant. So basically POPs that is called as. So recently what happened? The Union Cabinet has rectified seven chemicals which are listed on that. Cabinet has also delegated its power to ratify chemicals under the Stockholm Convention to the Union Minister of External Affair and Environment, Forest and Climate Change in respect of uh, POPs. So basically how this particular POPs going forward will be regulated? It will be regulated by Ministry of External Affair as well as Ministry of Forest, Environment and Climate Change. So this is something that you need to know in terms of uh, what has been happening in the news recently. So which are these seven chemicals which are approved? Now you don't have to like memorize each and every one of it but just at least go through the name so you could like eliminate if such kind of question are asked in the exam. So it is chlorodicon, hexabromobiphenyl, hexabromobiphenyl ether as well as heptabromodiphenyl ether. Tetrabromodiphenyl ether and pentabromodiphenyl ether, pentachlorobenzene, hexabromocyclodecane and hexachlorobutadine. So these are the seven chemicals which has been like kind of ratified by the union cabinet recently and because of which the Stockholm convention was in use. So just remember at least just go through the name. You don't have to memorize it like I'm telling again and again. You need not to memorize all these names but if such kind of questions are in examination you at least if you have seen the name somewhere you would be able to eliminate. So that's the main criteria. Now let's move forward and try to understand what this convention is all about. So it was signed in 2001 but it became effective in 2004. Why? Because there was a clause, there was a kind of a condition that it has to be like uh, 90 days after the ratification by at least 50 signatory states. So at least 50 signatory states were needed for it to become effective. And that's why it, when it was signed in 2001, it finally became the effective like when it get into the convention, it was 2004. Now, what was its aim, objective or what is the motive behind the convention? It is to eliminate or restrict the production or use of POPs. So basically what did it use? So it uh, focuses on both. It eliminates like it could in long term works for eliminate or there are certain chemicals which cannot be eliminated because of their use in different industries at least restrict. So this is its major goal. It has to restrict or eliminate the use of POPs which is your persistent organic pollutants. Now what exactly are POPs? So we have been talking about that Stockholm Convention deals with the POPs but what exactly is it? So in 1995 the Governing Council of United States Environment Program called the global action to be taken on POPs which is defined as the chemical substances that persist in the environment, bioaccumulate through the food web and pose a risk of causing adverse effect to human health and the environment. Now from the word itself you can see it means persistent. That means that it is going to stay in the environment for a long period of time. And if it is going to stay in the long period of time it could lead to the problem of bioaccumulation. Which means as we move up the ladder in the food web the more 
uh, like the percentage of the uh, pops uh, like contained in the food increases so this basically leads to the formation of bioaccumulation now there are certain properties of pops that you need to know the first one is that these are lipophilic what does lipophilic means that they love fats so basically they accumulate in the fatty tissue of living, uh, living animals and human being so the fatty tissue which are there in the human uh, body as well as in animal these uh, particularly pops will try to accumulate over there now in the fatty tissue the concentration can become magnified by up to 70,000 times higher than the background level so now you have to understand the kind of bioaccumulation which pops can cause look at it the magnification the amount of accumulation could get magnified to a level of 70,000 so this is like a huge amount it could get magnified and hence it has adverse effect on the health of human being as well as overall environment as you move up the food chain concentration of pops tend to increase so that animals at the top of the food chain such as fish predatory birds mammals and human tend to have the greatest concentration of these chemical now if you remember the food pyramid that we see so at the top of this pyramid are like human the carnivorous Carnivorous are the people who can feed on other animals, who can eat meat, carnivorous. So when this particular amount get accumulated, so it get accumulated at the bottom level, pops gets up. But then as it moves up the parameter, its concentration increases. Then in the just uh, recently we see that it increased up to 70,000, which is like really huge. So you need to remember that bioaccumulation of such an extent happen by the time humans are consuming any kind of food. So pops are very harmful for human beings. Now initially in the, under this convention, 12 pops have been recognizing and they are also called as dirty 12. Just remember this term dirty 12. So this is what has been like identified initially as these has been causing adverse effect on human and ecosystem and finally they have been categorized. So, so in order to categorize these 12 pops, they are like in the terms of pesticides industrial chemicals as well as byproducts so these are the three categories so if you go ahead and see the pops exist in pesticides industrial chemicals as well as byproduct of certain processes so these are the three categories under which 12 pops are arranged eventually uh, the more uh, like uh, pops has also been included in the, the con convention and you don't need to know all about it just remember that more or less they fall under the, these three categories only now one more thing that you need to remember is that this particular convention is legally binding. What does legally binding means? That if you ratify this particular convention, you have to follow the norms or you have to follow the uh, kind of clauses mentioned in it. So article 16 of the convention require that effectiveness of the measures adopted by the convention is evalu evaluated in regular interval. So it also go and look into the evaluation like how well you are trying to restrict or eliminate the use of power. So this particular convention is legally binding and finally what is the funding manager so it is managed by the global environment facility or we call it as GEF. This is also the global environment facility or the fund manager for many other uh, your environment uh, convention like your UNF triple C then uh, which is your climate change then UNCCD which is your combat desertification. So these, this is also uh, like fund manager to that also Minmata convention which is the mercury pollution. So Minmata convention. So it is also the fund manager for this along with one more which is called as CBD your convention on biodiversity so uh, and global environment facilities which manages the fund for cbd unf triple c unccd minwata convention is also the one which manages for stock uh, stockholm convention so just remember also a homework for you just tell me where stockholm is located which country just uh, in the comment section just reply is stockholm located in which country I hope you have understood this video. This is an important topic or important convention from your environment uh, like GS paper 3 perspective. So try to remember the basic details. You don't have to remember all the chemical names and such but basic details are required for you to be remembered.
So I hope you have understood and you like this video. If you have any doubt, feel free to drop a comment. Thank you.